In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We continue our journey through this Christmas season, asking for a greater awareness of God's love for us, His involvement in our lives, but also looking at our response to His activity in our daily living. In our prayer today, we're asked to remember Kenneth Leonardo Eugene Addenbrook, and also to remember Mark Tonner. Now, as we come to pray, we acknowledge we do fail at times. We ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who bestow light on all the nations, grant your peoples the gladness of lasting peace and pour into our hearts that brilliant light by which you purified the minds of our fathers in faith. This prayer we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves sow and we testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love, and anyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. Love will come to its perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear, because even in this world we have become as he is. In love there can be no fear, but fear is driven out by perfect love because to fear is to expect punishment and anyone who is afraid is still imperfect in love. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm, a response, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Lord, have you made judgment. The kings of Tarshish and the sea coast shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate all nations shall serve him. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and save the lives of the poor. 
Please stand to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to Christ who is proclaimed to the world. Glory from all who believe in him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After the five thousand had eaten and were filled, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to Bethsaida, while he himself sent the crowds away. After saying goodbye to them, he went off into the hills to pray. When evening came, the boat was far out on the lake and he was alone on the land. He could see they were worn out with rowing, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night he came towards them walking on the lake. He was going to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they had all seen him and were terrified. But he at once spoke to them and said, Courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them and the wind dropped. They were utterly and completely dumbfounded because they had not seen what the miracle of the loaves meant. Their minds were closed. The Gospel of the Lord. We always need to remember that God's love is a free gift to us. <coughs> he also gives us the gift of faith. In this letter, John describes how God showed his love by sending his beloved Son to save us. All throughout the Bible, and above all in the Incarnation, we actually see God's love in action. Jesus came to make the Father known through the Spirit of love. Now, even though we cannot see God, we experience his love, his care, his protection, because he allows us to share his Spirit. We know God through Jesus and his spirit of love. Jesus alone can show us what God is like. He alone can bring us the grace, the love, the forgiveness, and the strength of God. Through him alone do we perfectly find and perfectly know and perfectly come to love God. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that leads us to see God, that makes us aware of the presence of God, which gives us the certainty that we are truly at peace with God. So we are to strive to live in God's love. And our response, as we're told in Scripture, is to show the same love to others. Our love must be love in action too. St. John stresses that our love, the love of God and the love for others are inseparable parts of the same experience. So our faith and being loving people are always united. I think the key to understanding what St. John wants to teach us in this letter is that God loves us whether or not we love him and in spite of our shortcomings and failures to respond to his love. Now if we can accept that, we come close to being able to love others as perfectly as we are loved. In our Gospel passage today there are a number of messages. The first is about prayer. Dialogue with God can be aided by an environment conducive to the process of developing relationship with the one we love. Now it might be a quiet corner of a room, but we do have to discover the environment in which we pray best. And we must ask ourselves, you know, what is the place that enables me to be more in the presence of God and to spend time with him? Then we have Jesus stepping into the chaos of the sea. And like God in the beginning, he claims the sea with a few words of command and walks on the waters. Thus Jesus is actually being revealed as God. But Jesus does more than just calm the sea. He also calms his disciples. He soothes their fear and terror and prepares them for faith. Now in the same way, he tries to fill us with faith. Maybe Jesus has come to us in pain or in fear or in anxiety. Maybe Jesus has come in a crisis in our lives. Usually we experience the coming of Jesus like a calm 
entering our lives. I'd also like to suggest that when we are having difficulty in prayer, we may find Jesus actually coming towards us. For example, we have situations where we can't concentrate on what we're reading. We can't remember what we're saying. Our minds wander. In the midst of all this, it may be only for a few moments, those waves subside and we discover a prayer emerging from the depth of our being. You know, the truth of life for a Christian is that we are never alone. Jesus is with us in every moment. The Holy Spirit lives within us. And the Father loves us in every instant. Now we have to deepen our awareness of these realities. And that is to me the main lesson of Jesus walking on the water. I also like the teaching that in our times of confusion we can always take comfort that Jesus hears our cry. And he's always with us, even when we don't understand what is actually happening. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask the Father in heaven to strengthen our faith and to help us overcome our fears. That the church throughout the world may show deep faith in God our Father who guides world events. Lord, hear us. That we may grow in our faith in order to be confident of what we hope for and assured of the things we cannot see. Lord, hear us. That those who have lost their way in life may be led safely back home. Lord, hear us. We pray now for our own personal needs and those of our brothers and sisters. We pray for those who are ill, especially those affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who have died. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we know that anything we ask for in your name will be granted. May our ears always be open to your words. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Now let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> o oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace. Graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. We we'll pray the preface of the Epiphany and Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations, and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Amen. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Andrew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you gave away the sins of the world and the mercy of us. Lamb of God, you gave away the sins of the world and the mercy of us. Lamb of God, you gave away the sins of the world and the mercy of us. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, the body of Christ. We pray the prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Today you are to take the body of our Lord Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters who are unable to be with us. We ask you to give to them our greetings and our love, read the scriptures to them, pray with them, and minister to them this most precious sacrament. Let us now pray. 
May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever-deepened trust for things eternal. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify God in your daily lives. Amen.